What is up, everyone? Can everybody hear me okay? Let's start there. Make sure everybody can hear me. If you can hear me, that's a good thing. We lost our first guest. They left me. They left me. All right. Everybody can hear. Good deal, good deal. Let me go to here so I can get some live comments going on. Tonight, we're going to talk about business failures with uh, different companies. If you want to come in, feel free. I will share the link. Um, this is going to be a, a real thing. So, uh, so I'm going to give whoever the screen and we're going to get this thing rolling. So let me get in my thing here so I can read my comments uh, a lot quicker than what's woo, than what's going on here. Woo, there we go. All right. Live chat. Here we go. All right. We got our first guest here. First guest. Let me take this down. Move this. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. Here we go. First guest of the night, we have Shane BLT Lawn Care. What's up, Danny? What's going on, man? Well, uh, got to work today, so all's good. I know. I've seen uh, Jesse. Yes. And, he came uh, out. I've seen the good uh, challenge of trying to keep the V Rod straight. <laughs> You know, that V-Ride, when they're new, they are really touchy. I don't know. How was your Toro when it was brand new? Uh, it wasn't as bad as the Skag was. It took me about four days to actually get used to running straight lines with the Skag. Yeah, it's it's tough. and um, It was way actually, touchier. Today was my, I believe, ninth or twelfth yard with it. So... It's getting better, not where it needs to be, but it's getting better. So, all right, let's see here. So, uh, Shane, what we're doing is uh, we're going to have people on anywhere from five to five to seven minutes. Uh, we're trying to get, hey, what's a failure of yours uh, in the business that you would have changed if you could now that you know what you know now, uh, and then. Uh, one piece of advice that you would give to people. So you ready? I'm ready. All right, man. It's it's all yours. The the one thing that uh, I can tell everybody that I failed at, and it took several years, was understanding what my worth in business was. Um. Sorry, I'm trying to get the comments up here. And uh, I still struggle with it to this day. I get that you come across that customer that's retired. You know, you know they have the means because they've called a professional company out, but yet you feel, oh, you know, man, this is an 80 some year old lady, gentlemen, you know, who knows what they can afford, you know, I don't want to. And then it's always, Hey, if you don't mind, would you do this while you're at it? And you just feel like, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to charge them. I feel bad about it. And this happened to me recently at some yards. Some people watch my channel. Some don't. Um, I have a series of yards I call the gauntlet, very big, very cut up, a lot of trimming. And um, I totally underbid them. So over the last couple of years, I've been trying to get them back up to where they need to be. They need to be at 50 to $60. Last year, I raised them all up five. I raised the mulching prices up, the hedge trimming prices all, all across the board. And sure enough, I lost four of them right off the bat this year. 
So the ones I do have left are all over $45 and they are where they need to be. The ones I lost were all $35 yards. And so my biggest, my biggest mistake in business has been undercharging because of the emotional pull and the, the customer has a way to talk you out of a price when you're new. And when you're new, you don't think, geez, you know, I don't deserve this much money. I shouldn't be at this point. I, you know, I don't, do I really know what I'm doing? Am I really a professional? And you start to question yourself. I'm over that. I know my worth. I know what I will cut for, what I won't cut for. I know, I know my level of, um, how would you say it? I, I know my level of quality and I won't do anything other than that. So the one thing I would tell people out there is absolutely know your worth, but you also have to know what you're talking about and you have to be able to back up the talk with the quality. You do that and the sky's the limit. So there it is. Uh, and, and I've failed in that so many times and I don't know. There you are, Danny. Trying to figure this whole thing out here. Oh, that ain't it. That'll work. I thought I could make me small and keep you big, but uh, apparently. This is good, man. I mean, you know, but those are the things. That's the biggest failure I've had in business is. And when you start to sit there and realize $30 for a yard you're paying your truck payment, you're paying your insurance, you're paying help. Where is the profit? Right. And we're all in business to make a profit. So where is the profit when all those things are taken out of that $30? Where is your profit? And I don't know if you've went through that, Danny, where you where you get an, an elderly person and they just seem so sweet and so nice. Every week, it's something different, something different. You just feel so bad. You think, well, that's going to be me one day. What if I don't have the money? But then I realize when you go to the grocery store, they're not giving groceries away free because they feel bad for you. Right. Yep. And you don't go to a health spot if you don't have the money for a health spot. Yeah. You don't call you don't call a lawn care company if you don't have the money to pay for them. That's exactly it. Like I mean literally that's that's great advice. Does anybody have any questions? I've got to fix my lighting. I don't know. I, I usually have my backlight back there on. So <clears throat> any questions? <laughs> I like what uh, Brian Gamer said. Remove the emotion from business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to keep it. You got to keep it business, and uh, and it's it's hard in the beginning because you're out there and you're trying to man. I'm going to take anything and everything, and I'm just going to kill it this year. And you end up killing yourself. <laughs> well, and, and I've done that. I would say maybe the last three years I've been a lot better with it. As your confidence grows, you find that you're able, and, and I, I think some people see it as arrogance, but it really is a level of confidence that if I walk, if I go up to Danny Lanier's house and I say, Danny, um, to cut and trim and blow, I'm going to have to charge you $45. And Danny says, man, uh, some kid stopped by earlier. He was going to do it for 25 well, right. Danny, have a great day. Thanks for calling me. And if you need anything, let me know. And now that may look like arrogance to some, but in reality, it's just, it is the reality of what this business is. When a lawnmower cost 
upwards of ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Then you've got and insurance and his pickup truck cost almost fifty thousand dollars. You have to make money. So this guy, Rick Allen, would like to know, uh, Rick, how much should you go up every year? Um, this is going to vary between location to location, definitely. Uh, but, you know, if, if I raise my prices, it's usually around $5 a year. Um, we've got other people that's going to join later on. We'll let them answer that question. Uh, I'm going to write it down here so, not, so I, I don't forget that. Uh, but I I actually raise my prices $5 the first time, and then I go up $2 to $3 every two years after that. And I feel that's a fair amount where you can make the money up if you're not just cutting grass, mulching, edging. You know, a lot of guys say, when I do mulch, I throw the edging in with it. That is the biggest mistake you can make. You have to get paid for your time, your work. Anybody that has hand edged a bed understands how taxing that is on the body. And yep. it's pushing the wheelbarrow up into your dump trailer, dumping it. Unlo Let's say you just got a little five by seven trailer. You've got to hand unload all that dirt at the end of the day. Literally. Yeah, you, you learn real quick, real quick. It's But that that's it, man. If anybody has a question, I'll answer. If not, I'll be watching the next guy. All right, who's next? I, I got the link down there. If y'all don't have any questions, uh, we can keep them down at the bottom of the screen here. And uh, once again, you know, we're trying to keep this around five to ten minutes per person with questions and answers things like that. I don't think it's going to be real hard to do. Uh, but James says, how many yards do you mow a day? Uh, okay. I got, uh, I'm down to right around 60. So what, what is that divided by five? 12, 12 a day, about 12 a day. And now I do those by myself and I have my guy that works for me, Justin. He goes out and does the edging and mulching, all that. So once the edging and mulching is done, he either helps me with the yards or we half a day is yards. The other half is hedge trimming or pulling weeds or whatever have you, maintenance type stuff. Do you uh, double cut? Um. <sighs> Sometimes, sometimes I do. And, and look, I don't charge for double cuts. I know some people do. I just never have. What's your thoughts on that, Danny? Uh, if it's a weekly property um, and it's grown quite a bit, uh, I will double cut it if I absolutely have to with no issues. They're a weekly client. My bi-weekly clients, I charge them the extra amount because I'm pretty much guaranteed I'm going to double cut it because my name's on that property when I leave. So, uh, yeah. so they're already being pretty much charged for that double cut regardless when I show up, which I've only got about three bi-weeklies. So. Yeah, I try to stay away from the bi-weeklies, yeah. honestly. It, it, it gets to be, especially in the spring when the rain is coming down, with this fescue we have here, it becomes an absolute nightmare. Uh, Tiger Texan says, when you are one man crew and you're down a mower because something broke on it and can't cut until it's fixed, what do you do? Uh, my personal opinion on this is my, my stack that I had was in the shop all the time. Uh, I rented a mower. I didn't have a choice. I rented a mower and made sure that my properties got done. Uh, my best advice to that would be if rent a mower or buy a cheap backup that, you know, if something was to happen to your main mower, you've got to, I mean, I believe in backup, backup, backup. And, and that's where I was lacking the last few years. I didn't have a backup, but honestly what I've done, and, and this is crazy because they charge so much for a 
rental up here at a, a rental up here is almost a hundred dollars a day. So be honest with you. I took the 21 inch man, popped it up as high as I could. And I mowed as many as I could get. And, I, but I have a good rapport with my clients and they know that I'm not going to let things go two or three days without being repaired. And I also have a really good relationship with my dealer. And he also understands that this guy's got a lot of lawns. He does a lot of business with us and we need to get him up and running. Yeah. Dealer support is huge. Uh, some dealers around here don't do, uh, you know, I mean, literally there's no dealers in my, my personal area that, uh, you know, will do a loaner. So, uh, so I mean, that's just, unless you, I, I don't have the time to drive two hours away to buy a mower for a loaner. Um, so, you know, I mean, but dealer, dealer key, uh, ew, the dealer support is very key. Uh, for bi-weekly, do you charge for a cut and a half or double? Uh, Lawn Kings, personally, uh, most of my properties are start out at 35 bucks. Depending on how big that property is, it could range from fifty to sixty-five dollars for bi-weekly. Yeah, I'm the same. I do about a cut and a, about a cut and a half. Yep. Uh, Brian Garner says everyone has different operating costs based on their setup. Every customer is not necessarily for you. That is that is very very true. So, yeah. and, and a lot of people will get those customers that. It doesn't matter what you do. You cannot make them happy. There right. are some customers, they could have 10 lawn companies a year, and they're just going through them because for some reason, something just doesn't. You know, a lot of times that is a communication problem mm -hmm. where you just talk to them and say, look, what? let's get down to the root of this. What would you like to see me do? And – we talked about it last night in another live stream. We've had, well, I think it might've been yours. We've had customers that wanted their grass cut at two inches, but that was in my bush greens. I'm not cutting anything below three and a half ever, ever. So, all right, I'm going to jump down, man, and let somebody else come up. All right. Well, thanks for thanks, joining man. us. Yep. All right, who's next? Who's next? We got the link down here. Who else would like to be on here telling their story for uh, to help others out and get some questions asked? Possibly, uh, Virgil. Man, I, I bet you're working. It would it would be great to get a uh, Lawnscapes of America up here and uh, do that. But I know I understand if he's working, man. Uh, anybody? Anybody? Who's next? Who's next? Where's my where's my Josh at, man? Josh Josh supposed to be uh, here. Let me. Let me message him here. Find out what's going on. The lowest I'll cut is two and a half. That's it. No more. That's that's how I am too. Yeah, and it's only literally one property that is like that. I have to fix this freaking light right here. It's going to absolutely kill me. Um, <clears throat> what's up, William? Jesse's in here, man. We got a lot of people in here. Anybody feel free to come up. Let's talk some business failures and uh, some advice you would give to people. Knowing now what you know, uh, what would be some advice you would give to people? All right, guys, I'm going to bed. Jesse, have a good one, man. Josh, Lawn and Landscape, how you doing? Lois, I'll cut us three. Uh, favorite trimmer line, man, I use the, I use the Echo uh, Black Diamond 105 is what I use, the 105. We got our next guest in here, and uh, this guy, man, we've become pretty good friends over the past couple of weeks. Uh, Pretty good for pretty good acquaintances, I guess you could say, uh, because you really don't become friends. I'm getting thumbs up in the background. Nobody can even see him. I don't think he knows what's going on. But uh, all right. Our next guest in the house. Y'all get your questions ready. That way we, we have questions to ask him. Um, this guy is doing it. He's going all in this year. 
And uh, so, you know, he's he's make it or break it. Uh, we have Josh with the big Moco, man. And look at this, guys. He's he's done went and bought a freaking cabinet, got it in the background, trying to be all fancy. No, man, I just come across a good deal at Lowe's, man. Half off, I couldn't resist. Well, right. what's up, guys? Um, thanks for joining the stream tonight. Uh, Shane, good story, man. I got to say, he's absolutely right. Knowing one's self-worth is a big deal. And I think we all struggle with it. I'm trying to find my camera at the top left corner. But, yeah, it's a, a big deal knowing your own self-worth. And, uh, you know, I was talking with Danny earlier today, and I was like, man, what – what are my biggest failures? Um, it seems like they're just there's just so many little things. And then it hit me a little while ago. My biggest failure is managing workers. Like workers are, you know, the backbone of the company. And if you're not managing them, taking care of them, treating them good, paying them right, training, uh, you know, you're not gonna have what you're gonna expect because nobody's gonna do as good as you unless you put that much effort into them and their training. So that's what I'm going to be pushing forward to this year. I'm going to try to get these people trained up and, and rock and rolling because, yeah, instead of running one crew this year, we're going to go for two crews. So I'm trying to pick up about 100 customers. That's kind of a big order, you know, but uh, it can be done. You just got to throw a little money at it. <laughs> so, Danny, I don't know. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can run the, the gambit on employee stories and this and that. I was going to send you a photograph. If I send you a photograph, could you put it on the screen? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd have to search for it. We'll come back to that if you don't mind. Um, but it, long story short, I'll summarize the photograph. It's a picture of an employee with the roll bar of my mower caught in a tree. Tires were rutted up. He got it stuck there. And I said, I got to get a picture of this. So he hops in there and does that behind the, the mower all stuck. And I'm just like, look, I went over, I came across that picture today. It just, it hit me wrong. And I was like, you know what, what am I doing even considering keeping these people around? You know, you got to know when to cut. You've really got to tighten the rope on employees. They've got to come to your level. You've got to get them there. You've got to be a little harsh at times. You really do. I was just a nice guy to push over. Last year, they were practically crashing my company truck that I let the, drive, the lead man drive home. And he knew there was nothing I could do about it because he was so important, you know, and you got to have checks and balances and have your guys on your team and they got to respect you. Um, but if you're too overbearing, you're going to lose respect. and It's all going to get out of control. So uh, getting a handle on that, asking about how to handle that, and of course, going legit and getting workers comp and all that stuff I think, is the way to go as well. Any questions for uh, Josh? Josh, what what uh what piece of advice, man? Do you do you have a specific piece of advice that yeah. you would give? So what I'm pretty much getting at is whenever you do your hiring process, usually like if you're in my boat, it's hey, it's Friday, we've got 30 lawns, and it's 8:05, and my guy's not here. Oh, <laughs> you know what do I do? So if you're in that situation, you're going to hire the first goober that comes along. You're just going to be like, oh, yeah, $10 an hour, come on, you're hired. Man, it'd probably be best just to call all your customers. Take one hour, just call them all, text them all, say, dude, we'll be there tomorrow. Get on the phone, try to find somebody, and hopefully you've got people like lined up. Like We're going to have people lined up this year. So when somebody drops, we already got the next guy queued up, evaluated, background check, all that good stuff. We don't want like crazy looking people, but well, I don't. I want good looking people working for me that are, you know, clearly not, you know what I'm trying to say. Right. There's a reputation out there. Some of y'all might have it, not to get it, whatever. But uh, man, I wanted to have a, you know, clean record and all that good stuff. And some of my clients ask for it, but I know a lot of people have to hire felons, and that sucks. Yeah. And hell, some of them are probably felons. And, my buddy's a felon from long dead. But uh, anyways, yeah, just do your due diligence whenever you're hiring somebody. If you have the time to really sort them out, to really just give them the run before you actually commit to hiring them. Because they'll tell you, hey, you know, I'm 30 years old. I've got 17 years of experience. I'm a professional. And 
bull crap, man. You know, they, they don't have it until you see. It. Yeah. You, you've been talking about that and, uh, you know, come to find out it, Oh yeah. I got 13 years experience of running a crew. And that was, uh, he, he forgot yeah. to mention that it was 10 years ago that he did that. Uh, so we've got James Lucas says, what about guys on their cell phone all day? Yeah, you got to nip that in the butt, man. I made a policy this year, made everybody sign it. It pretty much says you're not allowed on your phone one, whenever you're on a property. If you're on break, you can get it out. If you're in a truck going somewhere, that's fine. But if I'm talking to you or something like that, you have to have my attention. And you know what I mean? Because when we're pulling up, I might be explaining this and that. And I don't need people on their phone or texting while I'm trying to give instruction and just, you know, be efficient with my time. Uh, but if it's an emergency or something, I get it. We use uh, the 3M uh, headphones, so I do let them uh, stream whatever music. I just ask that they get at least a one-hour playlist and don't mess with it. I mean, just simple. I mean, I'll probably give them good, cool toys, at least, you know, be efficient with it, you know. What do you recommend for getting great employees? Is there a secret? Is there a secret that you have that – uh? Yeah, call about 10 and bring in five and hire one. You know, <laughs> it sucks, but you have to call everybody's people and look for all those red flags. You know, get away from those people, you know, trying to rebuild their lives or whatever. You know, if they, if they need gas money in order to come to work, you shouldn't hire them. Like, if, if they're that far gone, it's, it's my experience anyway. Y'all might have had better experience with other people in that type of situation. But if if they can't get to work, they don't deserve to work because they've messed up so much in their life that I don't want to be the, the the hope that they get back on track. You know, I want somebody that is on track and shows up in a nice car. You know, if their mom brings them because they're young, that's one thing. But if they're 35 year, years old driving, you know, hoopty. That, yeah, that we, was talking, we was talking the other day about, uh, hey, man, you've got plenty of trimmers. Take them out there, split them up and say, start it. You know, and start weeding them out. Start weeding them out before you even yep. leave your house, you know. Uh, ben wants to know, Acme Moen down there, he's, uh, you know, Ben. Uh, he yep. said, how, up, many, man? how many guys are on your crew? All right. So we have already draw, uh, lost two brothers. They were going to be guy uh, lead and, you know, lawn tech for one of my, my small crew. They dropped like a fly until two weeks until we get going and – they three days later they just quit and i'm just like dude just pathetic uh another guy i thought we were going to lose we i gave him another chance and he came back and has been proving himself very well for the last couple of days so i'm really glad I, I did give him another opportunity uh but as far as right now there's me toby manny and michael so i've got all those people right now so I'm looking to have between four and five employees throughout the summer. So three on one crew and then three on my crew. And that's it. That's all we got. That's all we all got. Right on. So, uh, all right. Well, Josh, thanks for, thanks for coming in and sharing. And uh, guys, if you have any questions, I'm sure Josh is going to be in the background and on the chat. Uh, we're going to bring our next guest up and get him in here so let's see if he rejoins he he stuck in the background himself so <clears throat> i don't want to give it away but uh we'll see if he rejoins here and if so uh he is he's usually in the chat all the time a lot of you may know him because he is a skag fanatic uh he loves his skags and i'm i'm real curious uh nobody's ever i don't think anybody's ever seen him uh, so, you know, hey, this could be a first, man, of his uh, face being shown. It's like uh, it's like watching Tool Time, you know, and seeing seeing the face across the fence. <clears throat> so come on back up here. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? You joined. You left. You joined again. You left. I don't know where he went. I don't know where he went. Give him a minute. See? See what's going on here. Is it Dan? It is not Dan. That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? That would be kind of cool if Dan joined. Yeah, yep, that would be kind of cool if Dan joined. I forgot all about Dan, man. <laughs> I forgot all about Dan because he didn't he didn't join quick. Usually he's like, I'm here. I'm here. He's he's not here. Zach's not here. Man, we're missing 
missing quite a few people, and we've still got 21 in here. <clears throat> All right. Well, who's next? Who's next? Anybody, anybody, anybody? While we're waiting here, uh, I moved last year. And, uh, you know, for, for you guys just starting out, if you're just starting out, uh, one of the biggest things I would change differently if I could was what Shane said from the beginning. Know your worth, man. Know your worth. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just it's crazy. But uh, the second thing I would like to. Oh, man, boys, we've got somebody in the back room. Crazy, crazy. I'm so excited for this. He is. Uh, you can see the little flashy light. Um, so uh, the you know, know your worth. That's the biggest thing in this industry is don't let them people drag you down into, hey, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Uh, because that's a lot of free money you're giving away. Um, and then, you know, my second piece of advice, my biggest thing that I failed at last year was I had a lot of properties closer that were far, far away from me. Took me about uh, from where I used to live, took me about 35 minutes to get there. And uh, I moved 15 minutes south from that. So I was trying to make my route, you know, more dense and uh, move my radius in. And by doing that, I lost a lot of money last year uh, because I assumed that because my phone was ringing at this time of the year, business was going to be booming. And uh, when season actually came to, the phone started slowing down and I didn't make up all of that money that I had gave away to uh, help a buddy out to go full time. So uh, <clears throat> let's bring on uh, <clears throat> our next person in line here because this man, you're going to have to hold out for me a minute. Uh, guy in the hat gonna have to hold out for me a minute okay i see you tilting your hat i know you're probably mad <clears throat> give me a minute here let's bring on this guy because i know he definitely is working right now um and so here we go we've got virgil from uh, lawnscapes of america guys so uh any questions you have for virgil we've got another guest lined up uh virgil can we hear you yeah, I, I can hear you pretty well. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, Virgil. It's it's all yours, man. Give us some info here. Man, uh, the only, uh, it's hard to say because I have so many opinions about guys on YouTube and stuff, but uh, it, it's, it's real easy to hit the six-figure mark just cutting grass and landscaping. I mean, my wife thinks that I'm, I'm a little crazy, a little extreme, but Knowing your numbers and not not avoiding the uh, the tax man and your uh, that that's really the key thing that I want to tell people because avoiding him can get you in a little bit of trouble. I mean, I've been fighting with the IRS for a while, a couple of years, going back and forth on different years. Uh, Danny, you saw the uh, invoice I sent you. Uh, I'm here. Uh, uh, but I mean that's that's really it. Numbers and not and try not to dodge the tax man. Uh, your other bills. Listen, when you, when you get into a bind like the economy is now, everything else can be put off. Everything else can be worked out. Uh, the tax man, man, listen, they they're pushing these these new tax program that's out there now. Um, someone has to pay for it though, and those people that they know where the money is, uh, whether it's by your social or by your EIN number. Those are the people they're gonna come collect from, and those are the stories that you do not hear. Um, so that's really my only big piece of advice that, that I can really share. That uh, I, I hope it can help people. I just don't give up. Well, Virgil, it's it's finally great to see you, man. Yeah, Virgil sent me a tax bill earlier, guys, that uh, blew my mind. Bl totally just blew my mind. Um, and uh, it's one of them things that you're like, really? Is that real? Uh, and you see it, and it's like, man, I couldn't even imagine what I would do getting a bill like that. 
Yeah, I mean, I've gotten, I've gotten, I've got bigger bills than that. The bill you saw was a little over sixty-one thousand for one year. Uh, back in two thousand six, I think it was, I owed one hundred and fifty-seven for that year. Um, but I, I also had a lot going on. But uh, I mean, <clears throat> how do I put this? If you ever owe the tax man money, figure out, think about that amount that you owed. And then think about how much you made. And then that should pretty much give you an idea, a ballpark of idea of what I made that year. Right. Um, but um, I, I see it all the time. Like I, I like going to auctions online. And uh, I, I feel bad because you, you want, listen, like me, I, I want the auctions when, I, when I'm looking for new equipment or a new truck or a uh, new street, street sweeper like I have now. Um, but a lot of them are taxed taxes man these guys don't pay their taxes when when you when people say listen i I gotta charge you sales tax you're not charging sales tax you're collecting sales tax uncle sam and make sure i mean i don't know how it is in your state but like in my state pa like i'm in pa jersey and new york um you just have to keep separate bank accounts for that so wherever sales tax you're collecting for that state you just got to keep it separate that's the other thing i mean i've went through a couple of audits um, separate your money, whether it's your tax money, um, always pay yourself, obviously, first. Um, that, that's really key. Um, and separate your tax money. Because if you separate your tax money mentally, it's not there. I mean, at least for me, it's not. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, and then tax time, you don't have to scrounge. Oh, my God. How am I going to pay my quarterly? Like, like if, you, uh, if you're like me, you know, like I pay quarterly estimated taxes. So, uh, how am I going to pay it? I don't have to worry about it. My sales tax, I don't have to worry about it. I already put the money aside. This, I know my numbers. I know what it costs to run my house. I know what it, run, what it costs to run all my companies. Um, and that's really it. If I don't hit those numbers, it's on me. You know what I mean? Or it's on you. You know what I mean? Um, that's really it, man. Keep discipline. Self-discipline. I see a lot of the, a lot of guys waiting for their tax check. And, and I hear this all the time. And I don't say nothing, but it frustrates me. Why are you waiting for your tax check? And, you know, I should do a YouTube video on this. You're lending the IRS, the government, money. If you're waiting for that tax check, you did something wrong. You know what? Right. A lot of times I, I owe every year. But, you know, when I owe, I honestly don't care because, you know what? I know what I made. I mean, maybe it's just the way I look at it, the way my two accounts look at it. I made money that year. I don't wait for my tax check. Because think about it. If you have to wait for your tax check, that means you're not disciplined enough for your money. And that's honestly, I don't care who likes it, who doesn't want to hear it. That's really the bottom line. And you can ask any tax. Any, I mean, I'm not an accountant, but I mean, I, I've got two great accountants. And, um, and that's really the bottom line. I mean, go on IRS.gov. You can learn some stuff there. Obviously, the miles and ta- the fuel. Um, I mean, there's so many videos out there online now about that. But... Um, Take advantage of what's out there. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what I saw. I made a video today of Brian Law Maintenance. I saw his video uh, today on tax stuff. I, honestly, he seems like a nice guy. I thought it was a bullshit video. Um, it didn't really give me any info. Um, I'm, on, I'm not knocking the guy. I'm just saying, to me, it gave me no info. There's, there's programs out there now where you can get a $10,000 grant. You know what a grant is? The grant is free money. Just go online, fill out the application. Um, there's programs out there to help, you know, to help guys like us, um, or, or or the solo guy. Um, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to get off track there. I, I just I was watching a video and I got annoyed. Um, I, I just feel like similar videos out there. I I, mean, I told you about it. Mm-hmm. I, I just think some of the videos out there don't give the guys enough attention. Some of the videos that some of these guys put out on on YouTube seem like fluff. And I think it's wrong because think about it. When you're starting off, or you might not know, but you're in the industry, you're going to these guys for that info. Me, personally, I don't have the time. You know what I mean? I, I, I sleep maybe four hours a day, four to five hours a day. I don't, if I need info, I want that info now. I don't want to go to a channel. Oh, wow, he's talking about this. All right, good. I want to learn about it. Or while I'm driving, or while I'm cutting. Oh, I'm using my street sweeper. I don't want to hear about the fluff, man. Um, and and that, that's one thing that, that I hate about YouTube. 
There's good data and bad data. Try to stay away from the bad data. And that's honestly, that's something all of us have to figure out what's, what's good and bad data for each one, each one of us. You know what I mean? I mean, so, but you know, I, 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 I've talked to you about that, about the stuff on YouTube and uh, how I feel about, you know, whatever the fluff that's out there. And I feel bad for the guys starting off or the guys that don't know, because that's the part that sucks. So, um, that's the only other bit of before I'd like to tell guys, do your due diligence, do your homework, man. I mean, that, that's really it. I mean, I don't want to go off because it's going to piss me off some more throughout the night thinking about some of the videos out there, but I just feel bad for some of the guys out there because you look up to some of these, you know, influencers, YouTubers for the info, and it's like you're not getting, you're getting crap. And, I mean, that's, that's the only other part I'd like to tell guys. Do your due diligence because no one else is going to do it for you. I hate to say it. And it's one thing that when I had my first interaction with the IRS, they, that they told me when I had to get two tax attorneys and I had to get a legal attorney, uh, negligence of the law is no excuse. And that's really the bottom line with them. Um, because you got to remember the IRS is the, the biggest collection agency in the United States. Uh, don't want to go back to the IRS, but that's my my biggest gripe. But anyway, I don't know if that helped anybody. I didn't mean to get off track there. Virgil, we um, have a question I, for you here. I mean, I've been in this industry for a little 20 years, and I've seen so much change, but go away. What is it? All right. So we got uh, Ben from Acme Mowen says, a lot of people start businesses under the table and go legit with taxes, etc. at a later time. Do you suggest uh -huh. going legit off the bat or when it's more affordable and you have a business established? When well, it's more affordable. Listen, a lot of guys talk about, oh, no, don't go on this guy's property if you don't have insurance. You know what? When I started off, and this is a guy I've got you can call up the Marriott in Ben Salem, PA. When I started off, I didn't have insurance. I had a Murray push mower. I had the plug-in, big hog. Actually, I think I still have it. Blower. And I had a co-chef, so... Uh, we it that I got from a Walmart. I thought it was great, but it was horrible. Um, I didn't have insurance. Um, it, it, it was a group, my first commercial account. Uh, it was at the Marriott. I didn't have insurance. And a lot of guys, when you start off, think about it. I mean, you, you hear the stories all the time on YouTube and on Instagram. Uh, I just started off. I started off out of my car. I was borrowing a mower and a, and a, and a blower for my mom or my grandmother. Those guys that started up that way, you can't honestly tell me they had insurance. If you didn't have money to buy the blower, to buy the mower, and you didn't, couldn't figure out you were using a broom to, 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 to sweep off your walkway, you can't, you can't tell me you have insurance. So when you're starting off, listen, you got to do what you got to do. It's just basically it's survival. Obviously, you got to be more conscious of, listen, if I, if I imagine, I don't want to break anything. Uh, I mean, I don't know if that answers your question or not, or if it answered Ben's question. But when you're starting off, listen, if you can't afford insurance, you got to be mindful and just think about getting it. There's companies out there online called, I think it's called Next Insurance. Um, uh, I was talking to a buddy man about it. I think you can get insurance with them for about $76 a month, whatever it is. Um, I, my insurance is a little bit higher only because I, I've got all these commercial sites. Um, but when you're starting off, no. Listen, you got to do what you got to do because you have to feed yourself and feed your family. You just got to be more conscious. And like I said, for the guys, like I think it was Shane made a comment in one interview that he was using a broom. You can't tell me it was Shane was using a broom. He had insurance. So, anyway, I hope that answered the question. I hope I didn't rant off there. No, oh, you're fine, man. Well, thanks for joining, Virgil. We appreciate it, man. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, you're welcome. It's Anytime. good to see a face with the name. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Take care. Yes, sir. You too. All right, guys, we got our next person uh, back here in the background. He's been waiting a minute. We're going to go ahead and bring him up here uh, so we don't like uh, get – he looks like he's like he's mad already. Um, Y'all, this is William. William likes his uh, skags. Uh, Acme, I started out um, – this, this is how I started. Um, I started out legit as a company, but I did not have uh, – commercial insurance or my business insurance uh, until my general liability. I did not have that until my second year. 
Uh, my first year, I did not have it. And I sat there and I thought about it and thought about it. And I was like, honestly, if I break a window, it's cheaper for me to pay for that window, the $300, than it's going to be to claim it on my insurance. So uh, I literally did not have insurance uh, my first year in business, but I did start my company out with, uh, you know, registering with the state, the IRS and everything like that. So I wanted to be legit, but I did not have my general liability uh, until my second year in business. So William, uh, welcome, man. Welcome. It's, it's, I'm, I'm amazed you're not wearing orange. It looks like you're from Kansas city and a Royals fan uh, with all that blue on. Actually, no, I'm not. Uh, first of all, well, hey, everybody, my name's Will. Um, you can actually, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm also a big fan of Blake. What happened? You like froze on us, Will. All right. You still there, Danny? We're here. I can hear you. I just Hello? can't see. Hello? Okay. Um, if anyone can hear I me, can um, see, please, I can please, hear you. Please tell me if you can hear me loud and clear. I can hear you loud and clear, but I okay, cannot so see you. Far, so far, one person says hi. Okay, I'll go ahead and talk here. I'll make it very quick as I can in here. But I, um, I run a small lawn care business. And for myself, what I think personally, there's a lot of challenges that goes along the way. I mean, for me, I'm in my seventh year with my business. And we're just doing spring cleans at the moment. Uh, no mowing yet. But I will be honest with you guys 100%. Sometimes you have to take it step by step. You can't just start big. You got to start small. I mean, heck, I mean, I had a push mower to start my business in the back of my car. And, uh, I mean, I didn't have a pickup truck until probably maybe my third or fourth year of my business. So, um, but the biggest challenge for me, what I had to go through is probably just, you know, um, customers. And probably the biggest hurdle that I had to go through a lot was probably getting you know, getting yelled at by neighbors. I mean, nobody likes that. Let's, let's face it. Oh, he gone. Um, are you guys guess what's wrong now? Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you now. And now I can't. Okay. You might have to, uh -oh. you might have to rejoin. Like Will. Oh, that's so interesting. Oh, there you go. Hey. Is it work? okay? How's your Wi-Fi? Can you hear me loud and clear? Yep, and I can see okay. you. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, before I continue, is there, is there anybody has any questions for me before I continue with my uh, with my uh, journey to my business? Continue with your journey, and we'll we'll answer questions as we come in here. Very well. Um, so likewise for myself, I've I've been thinking a lot about my business as of lately. Um. Every, every winter, I think, I go to this convention center, um, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys have probably already saw my comments uh, recently with Danny's lives videos he's been making. Um, you know, I think there's a, there's a lot of new equipment on the market out there that I really enjoy looking at, especially with all the Skag cheetahs and such. And I, but before I got into Skag, Dixie Chopper was my biggest mower that I had a dream I wanted to get one of those mowers. But until then, they said that, oh, we're going to quit now. We're not going to be in business anymore. It really just shattered my heart. Um, I always wanted to get an Excalibur 74 inch mower for my business, but you know, it's, it's a dream now, guys. I mean, you know, it's tough, but I think like, you know, I mean, I, I had to go with a backup plan. And, and so I told my team said, Hey, there's another mower that I want to get. It's, it's called the cheetah from Skag. And I heard it's really good. And so it turns out it was pretty awesome. I use it a lot for my, I, I certainly use it for my yard a lot with my neighbors, but um, I'll tell you what, Big yards like those, you definitely want to use a rider or a huge stand-on mower. Don't want to use a small commercial walk by 48s or something like that. Um, but I also believe um, – hold on, let me, th let me think here. I don't want to waste your time or make everybody, like, rushed up or anything like that. Hold on, give me one sec here, guys. I mean, I want to transition to another uh, um, uh, statement here. Let's see. Let's see. What was I going to say? Um of course, I have uh, uh, three other full-time employees that work for my business. Um, everybody, everybody has a job. I have great staff that helps out. Um, you know, I couldn't, I could have done this without their help. I mean, you know, starting solo is usually a, a, a very wise choice to begin with. 
Um, but when you get help, you need to make sure that you trust that you trust your employees. Um, hey, you had an employee. Uh, I had a guy that kind of helped me out when I got a lot of rain and stuff and just helped me get caught up. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I, I really wouldn't call him an employee. He might have helped twice, okay. three times a month, maybe. All right. Makes sense. Um, Let's see. Let's see here. Um, I know Blake's got a few guys working for his business. I've seen his videos a lot. I mean, I know Kevin Cheely had a, a couple guys working for him when I used to watch his channel a lot. Um, but I mean, I follow a lot of other YouTubers too. I mean, it's, it, it's amazing, you know, that this long care community is becoming really, you know, much more, uh, more of a, like a, a caring community, basically, if I'm right. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. It, there's, there's really a lot of help in here in it. Uh, you know, the thing that, that gets me is people selling contracts and things like that. And I'm like, man, why, why are y'all paying for this? There's so many people out there that will help you uh, and show you their contracts and stuff like that. If you would just ask, I mean, why are you paying for free information? I, I guess. And uh, it's, so it yeah. kills me. Mm -hmm. That's for, that's for, I mean, when, when Shane was on here, he said that he doesn't take biweekly clients. I mean, our company does not do that either. You know, we only do weekly clients for mowing. Um, but we also do, uh, we do general landscaping. I think the biggest, uh, the biggest thing that I've improved on the most is probably maybe doing fertilizing. And I just put down pre-emergent fertilizer for all my clients. Um, I think the hardest thing to do is just pushing that 80 foot spreader that I have. Um, it is pretty big. Um, the, the big yards that I do my yard for sure. And for my neighbors too. Oh my gosh, I get a big workout of just pushing a fertile uh, spreader. I know a lot of, I know a lot of companies, they prefer using a stand on spreader or whatever else they can use. But I mean, but, but if you want to just do it the right way, you know, you need, you need that exercise. And that's what I'm trying to do as well. I'm trying my best to keep up with my heart rate. I'm also trying my best to, you know, get active and especially when you're outside, you know, if you're not working hard, you know, you're not, you're not sweating as much as you, you usually are. So right. I think that's one thing I can take up. Well, Will, what would your one piece of advice be uh, to people just starting out or, you know, people that period, what would your one piece of advice be to try to help people out? You know, that's a very good question. I think, um, I think, for example, um, you know, if you're going to hire somebody that has experience, you know, I would make sure to interview them first. I mean, when I hired my first employee, my first full-time employee, um, I did, I interviewed him. I did a background check to make sure that, you know, is he, is he, um, uh, what's that word called experienced, like very good experience. Um, and usually most times, even though I'm just, even though I'm the, even though I own a business, but however, I learn from my employees, you know, from the, like what, what past that they have. So that way, you know, when we do these, when we do these properties, you know, I can learn from them step by step. You see what I mean, guys, when what? you hire somebody, when you, when you hire your first employee or anybody that you know, that is very good, try to learn from them a little bit. It's a good, it's a, actually a good habit to do. Sweet deal. All right. Well, William, thank you, man. Thank you. It's good to put a put an actual uh, picture uh, with the you know a face to the name now instead of just seeing your little logo down there of you. Yeah, I'll try my best to work on that anyway. But thanks again, guys. Uh, have a good night, and uh, I gotta get to, I gotta get ready for work tomorrow. So I'll see you guys later. Sweet deal. Thanks, Will. Take care, guys. Plug yourself, Will. Where can we follow you at? I don't think Will has a uh, page. Um, I think he might have an Instagram, but I, I don't think he has, a, you know, an, a YouTube channel or anything like that. Anybody else like to come up here? Uh, let me know. All you got to do is click on that link that I posted and uh, we will put you in and, you know, hey, see if anybody else is willing to join here. We got 23 people in the room still. We've kept a consecutive over 20, which is pretty good. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is probably, uh, we're just going to start talking business guys. Uh, my mowing starts tomorrow. I'm going to get back at it. And so, uh, I got videos that I'm going to start posting on y'all for Tuesdays and Fridays. Saturday night is going to be Saturday night live. And, uh, we're going to talk just like we are like this. And we're just going to talk about different things, have people come in, join the room. 
and uh, you know, give get information. So uh, I think this is a great thing. That's uh, Saturday Night Live. Yep, and uh, <clears throat> see see what happens. You know, uh, this has been a, a very successful first time broadcast. I would say with consistently over twenty people the whole time we've been here. Uh, ben, you want to come in, man? Feel free to click the link. I don't know if you're busy. Uh, Dylan, solo uh, cuts. Uh, we we got quite a few people in here. So somebody, anybody. I know. Hey, it's it's uh it's pretty original, Jacob, because you know it's Saturday Night Live with Lanier. So uh, that's what we should call it: SNL Saturday Night Lanier. Uh, I'm about. 40 minutes south of Kansas City, James. About 40 minutes south of Kansas City. <clears throat> in the grandstand, make sure you see my response to your comment. In the, okay, okay. Sorry, man. Edit in some video while listening to Danny Boy. I said, wait, anybody, anybody. Dylan, come on, man. Oh, man, come on, come on. Somebody come on in. Somebody come on in. Cranking them out. That's right, man. I'm. I told them I'm going big this year. I'm going big this year, uh, bigger than I normally do, and uh, it's been it's been showing. Uh, the progress on my channel has has really been growing, and uh, hey, it's it. That's what makes it worth it. You know, when you're when you actually see that progress that you're putting into everything start blowing up a little bit, uh, then it, it's great, man. <clears throat> we're working on it. We're working on it. We're a little over 9,100 now. So, uh, you know, if we keep growing the way we're growing right now, we'll, we'll have it by the end of April. Uh, we'll have 10 K by the end of April. If we keep growing, well, uh, it'll be close, uh, by the end of May, possibly if we keep growing the way we're growing now, then, then by the end of May, definitely. But you know, Hey, <clears throat> never know. You never know. From that 8,500 to that, uh, well, from 7,000 to 8,500, well, from 7,000 to 9,000 was pretty, pretty rough, man. Pretty rough. So, uh, Tiger, come on up, man. But I'm only a small business. Hey, this is for anybody. Anybody. Uh, you know what's great about listening to small businesses like, like yourself is – you are still learning just like everybody else is. So no matter whether you've been in business for one year or you've been in business for, for 20 years, I would love to hear what you feel you have failed at. Like that's what this is all about. This is all about. <clears throat> yeah, boy. <clears throat> yeah, boy. They're blowing up though. They're blowing up, man. Hey, they're, they're, they're the good subscribers. Ultima. They comment on all the videos and, uh, you know, real lawn care companies, man, it was crazy. It was crazy how it worked. Crazy. I just couldn't believe I could pick the industry and everything. That That's a joke, guys. It's a joke, guys. All right. Anybody? Anybody? We've been on here for right at uh, an hour. If anybody else is not wanting to come up, we might do this uh, segment again. Um, this coming Saturday, we might have a second volume two. So yeah, if y'all if y'all want time, uh, you know I'm not sure, James. Um, I haven't decided yet. Uh, I don't know if this 8:30 was too late or uh, if y'all think it was right on. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. You know, was 8:30 a good time, or should we roll it back to eight, or should we make it nine? You know, <clears throat> my biggest mistake might be not starting sooner. Never. It's never too late to start, Josh. Never too late to start, though, man. Never too late to start. I'll come on and just roast you. <laughs> we believe that. I'm not qualified to give advice yet. Franco, man, you there's still something that you you feel that you've did. You know, what would you do differently? That's that's what this is all about. What would you do differently? Knowing now. Uh, what you do, what would you have done differently if you could start all over? 
My biggest mistake. Okay, let's see here. Tiger says biggest failure or biggest regret is not having insurance when I broke a side window with a house when a rock was thrown at it from my edger. Out of pocket expense, never again. Uh, well, Tiger, man, I don't know. Uh, yeah, if the window costs less than $500, then I would much rather pay for it out of pocket than claim it on insurance. Eight would be good. I work till dark sometimes. All right, eight. So at least eight. So we started at 8.30 tonight, Powers, uh, 8.30 Central Time. So, you know, we, we could roll it back to eight. What was the cost of the window? Right. Yeah. Yeah. What was the cost of the window? You know, yeah. If you've got a $500 deductible and the window cost you 350 bucks, well, you just, you know, uh, made your insurance go up for no reason. I'd, I'd much rather pay that out of pocket and uh, not worry about it and just skip the insurance claim. Twenty-one people in here. Somebody's got to want to come up. Everybody came to watch. Nobody came to. Nobody came to talk. I broke a window too. It was a twenty-five dollar screen door glass frame. Uh, my biggest mistake is me taking this more serious sooner. That's your biggest mistake. Send me the link. The link's right there, Franco. Link's right there, buddy. Franco going to come in. Franco, Franco. Everybody's on their cell phones. Uh, so, hey. Hey, man. It is what it is. We don't care. We don't care what you're on as long as we can hear you. Thankfully, it was only $256. I thought it was going to be a thousand. So, yeah, man, I would have never claimed that on insurance. I would have never claimed that on insurance. I'd have paid that out of pocket and, uh, you know, hey, which, you know, it seems like you did. It seems like you did the out of pocket, which is exactly what I would have done because, uh, you know, hey, it's way cheaper that way. Way cheaper. You, you claim it on insurance, you paid $500. So, you know, you saved yourself money, plus your insurance didn't go up. So, all right, guys, we got our next uh, gentleman here. Hey, man, will you send me that car in the background? What was that? I want that car on the shelf in the background. That that red yeah. car. Yeah, yeah. You can have it. It's a Chevy. You can have yeah, it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I don't even care that's if it what, works. That's why it doesn't run. <clears throat> that's, hey, that's fine. At least the transmission probably still good in it. Uh, probably. <laughs> All right. So uh, for y'all that don't know, Franco has typed in his whole name here. He wants y'all to know who he is. And uh, Franco, man. Franco, uh, we got to show this real quick, Franco. Um, Chemical Guys is live. Uh, we have Chemical Guys in here. Uh, look at look at the look at this cabinet, guys. This is like everything Chemical Guys you could ever get. Uh, literally, I mean, three buckets. <laughs> like <laughs> everything in this is chemical guys everything can you see that uh, like look at that everything in this cabinet is nothing but chemical guys like that's that's over a thousand dollars worth of stuff and chemical guys <clears throat> crazy absolutely crazy uh, all right i got some of that snow foam stuff man all right franco so uh it's all yours, man. Uh, if y'all have any questions for Franco, Franco, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long you've been in business? And, uh, you know, hey, tell us, uh, tell us, of course, business failures, man. That's what we want to know. So it's it's all you. Have at it. All right. So I've been in business for three years. This is the third year <clears throat> that I've been in business. And um, so far, I like it. See, I do this three days a week. I also have a full-time job, work 60 hours a week running a hotel in the area. So I only do long care three days out of the week, three, four days out of the week. I'm hoping to go full time this year. Uh, can you guys see me? Yeah, we got you. We got you. You're good. All right. Can you see, can you see me? Yeah, I can see. I just All took right. yourself off the screen so everybody had you. Sorry about that. So I'm hoping to go full time this year. 
or maybe next year. But uh, in the three years that I've been in business, the biggest thing, the biggest issue that I've had, and it might be just me, but you know, it might help someone else. You have to see or you have to be careful who you're working for, especially if they're family members or friends, because they'll be the first ones to help you out in your business. You know, say, hey, you, you know, I got like in my case, I have a bunch of family members that when I started cutting grass, they were the ones telling me, hey, you, you can come mow my yard. But now those are the ones that they don't want to pay or they get behind on their monthly payment or they're you can never make them happy. And at the end of the day, they're, they're still your friend and they're still your family members. And it's really hard to to get rid of those clients, even though you hate them. I mean, they're still your you know, friends, cousins, uncles, whatever, you know. So you have to be very careful whenever you start because, yeah, it might seem like a good idea to mow for your your cousin. Your cousin or your uncle, but at the end of the day, and and you know, it might be just me, but it always seems like there's always an issue, and it's always when whenever you're related to, to whoever you're you're cutting the grass. I've got a bunch of clients that I do that I don't even know them, and they're excellent customers. You know, I got a bunch of clients that I've never even met before. I've met them once or twice when I first went to give them a quote, and then. I got family members and see them every Sunday at a party. And then those are the first ones. They'll say, hey, look, you, you know, I'll pay you next week. Or they'll, they'll, they'll always have some excuse to not pay or to complain about the work. And they, they know you can't do much because you're related to them. So that's one of the biggest issues that I had in the you know three years that I've been in business. Real talk right there. So what would your... Uh one piece of advice be man if you could give people one piece of advice what would the best advice you you could think of to give people knowing what you know now choose your clients wisely be careful because not everyone is out there to help you even if they're family members and you know it's it's hard to say because you know they know that they're still your family members but you have to be careful because the first, you know, they'll be the first one to um to screw you. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Right. And, you know, and then you can right up yeah, that's just yeah. I mean, that's literally how it is. Uh, you know, they're usually the first people to uh, to want to support you, but they're also uh, the people that are, you know, hey man, uh, yeah, I've got a family member that does it, and we get a pretty good discount, you know, or uh, you know, things like that. And so it's, 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 it's hard. It's hard. You got to separate that, uh, business from personal life. And you just know, let, another, you know. another advice that I could give, if you're in multiple houses in the same neighborhood, right? Like in my case, I'm out seven houses in my neighborhood. I made the mistake to tell one lady how much I was charging her next door neighbor. And it was a different price from her yard because both of the yards are different. You know, this lady, she has a fans. She has a pond in the backyard. She got trees everywhere, so it takes me longer, so I have to charge her more. And um, I made the mistake of telling her, you know, how much I was charging the lady next door. And within days, all of the other people, that were, all the other seven houses that I was mowing in the neighborhood knew how much I was charging the other lady. And then they were asking, hey, you know, how come she gets charged you know, right. $30 less than, than my house? And you know, so that was another mistake that I made, just telling people how much I was charging. You know, so Josh day. says, uh, Josh says he lost his dad as a customer when he raised his one acre lot from twenty five dollars to forty. When you start when you're starting out, family should pay extra to support you, not rip you off. He said they do not speak now. See. <clears throat> See, and um, this is another thing. My mom's sister, right? Very wealthy lady. She was the first client that I ever had. She makes over two hundred, two hundred thousand. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Way over that. She's got a brand new Escalade sitting in her front yard. She can never make the thirty dollar payment every month. And there's always an excuse. Oh, you know, the dog sick. Oh, you know how to do this. Or so that's why I say, you know, family members, they'll be your first clients. But they'll be the first one to screw you yep. big time, especially when they're close family members, too. And then it's hard because, you know, at the end of the day, you'll see them at a barbecue at the end of you know, the weekend. And 
Yeah. Now it's like, well, great. You owe me money. Are they going to give me my money? <clears throat> Want my money. Aunt, Aunt Marie, give me my money. Jacob says he don't work for family or friends, period. And uh, Tiger says, I agree, MoCo, because they should want to see your business succeed. Feel free. I like my video. First video ever. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Zach made a video. Zach made his first video, guys. Lawnscapes of America. Wow. Not token over dollars. You're 100% right. That's a tough one. My failure, Garn's Lawn Care, is not being able to tell customers no. I have over 100 customers now. Deputy says, absolutely, Franco. First to screw you is family. They want it done for free. That's right. It is not live yet. Zach is still editing, but Zach's got a video coming soon. Got a video coming soon. All right, guys, we got the link up there. If anybody else is uh, wanting to come up and join, feel free. We've had a lot of good chatter tonight, and uh, we've still got, you know, 18 people. Well, we just dropped to 17 people, and it has been great. I, I appreciate everybody that has came up here, and, uh, you know, it takes a lot of courage to come up here and tell uh, some of your failures, and uh, it's it's just it's hard. It's hard. Will a card on file help fix that? Yes and no, uh, especially when it comes to family. Why did you charge my card? Ask your son why he charged my card. Uh, you know, hey, the good, the bad, and the ugly right here. All right, guys. Well, apparently nobody else wants to come up. So uh, I think we're going to continue doing these Saturday night things even though it is Monday night. Uh, we're going to start doing them on Saturday, I think, and just get some talking going on, get some people in here, and uh, learn more about each other and the business. So, you know, uh, it's hard to join the live whenever you don't have a wrench. I'm sorry, Franco. Franco, I'm sorry. It looks like you joined just fine. And uh, I know, man, I took, I took Franco's wrench away and uh, Zach's wrench away, and... Uh, there has been no super chats for the first live in, in a couple of weeks. So uh, I don't know if that was a good thing to take their wrench away or not. Um, I was kind of looking forward to paying my bills this month. I'm just joking, guys. I'm just joking. <clears throat> Let's see. Garns say this. In addition to the $35 lawn service, we would gladly do that favor for $10 or however much you consider, you know, that being it could be five dollars whatever just don't uh you know don't be throwing stuff in there for free because then everybody thinks oh man we got so much free stuff out of this guy last year yeah let's get him again we'll get him to clean all that stuff up in the back <clears throat> i think it's weird in the office much better in the garage i can't do it in the garage because i, I just can't do it i can't go uh add all this stuff to, I don't have a computer in the garage. Don't have a computer in the garage. <clears throat> no one wants to hear me, Jacob says. I think it's, oh, there we go. Ram, ram. Uh oh. How do you get the wrench? Oh, man, it was just something. Uh, I don't know. If I join Danny, I want you on the screen as well for our chat. You kind of scare me, Solo, but uh, hey, man, let's do it. Let's do it. I'll, I'll stay here. Come on with it. Come on with it. Come join. For y'all that don't know, Dylan, he is a UAG member as well. Uh, Solo Cuts Landscaping. He does have a YouTube and he has an Instagram. Uh, so y'all go check him out. You know, I can't tell y'all to subscribe to people because everybody has their own thing of content. If uh, if people subscribe to everybody, then, you know, we would all have 100,000 subscribers. So... I just hope you like the new paint job that Franco and I are going to give you. Oh, man. Oh, man. Zach, how do I put Zach in timeout? Anybody know? How do I put Zach in timeout? I'm joking. I'm joking, Zach. I'm here. I'm There's the link right there, Dylan, if you want to come in, man. Come on with it. Come on with it. I know. Jacob, Zach's getting getting man 
getting a lot up there. 19 people still in here. We've kept a good one tonight. If I had a wrench, I could, Danny. I know. I know. That is true. That is true. I may have to give Jacob the wrench, take care of Franco and Zach. All right. Here we go, boys. Solo landscaping. What's going on, man? Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, um, I'm good. Uh, I don't know what happened to the man. Everybody, I don't know what's going on with the talk. Can you hear me fine? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. When you first started talking, it was funny. It didn't want uh, to. Uh, yeah. It had like a, it was like a bad movie. Like the voice and the talking was way off. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> So what's up, man? How you been? How's you life? It, man. Good. Just uh, trying, waiting to get the green light. Really, through all this Corona deal going on, I think I think we're finally at that point to where we're getting the green light. Um, especially for like our commercial properties and everything. Um, I think those right now are deemed essential, um, but it looks like it's been proposed for lawn and landscaping as we approach that growing season for. Uh, it to be deemed essential for even residentials right. um, just to keep like on the health risk and everything. But with how hard they're pushing like outdoor activities for people to just even get out of the house, even if that's at your own home. Um, I think that's where we're starting to be deemed essential. Uh, just that way, if people can't maintain their yards, right. they also can't go outside because there's a foot of grass, you know what I mean? So, but no, I think, <sighs> We could probably start cutting this week, but I think I'm going to wait one more week. I drove around today and checked everything out, and spots can be cut. You know, you have those high and lows, um, but I think next week we'll probably be full going on it, so I'm ready to get out there. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm starting tomorrow. I was like, man, I'm so hyped up. I know I'm not going to be able to sleep at all tonight, uh, yeah. but, you know, hey, it is what it is. So, Dylan, uh, man, okay, I'm going to stay in. I'm going to stay in here with you. That's right. But, Let's uh, Let's chat about but, uh, what, what you want to talk about any business failures, uh, and any advice that you would be willing to give, man. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, I've been working full time and running our business for the past five years. Um, so it's been a lot of time and energy. We got a wife, two kids at home. So, uh, juggling the work life balance is definitely a big deal. Um, I would say for any advice of people doing the same thing, because I know there's a lot of folks that are working full time and running a business, you know, and have family at home is just like a hard part that I dealt with was always having that in my mind of, man, this next job could lead to the next one. It could lead to that right customer. It could be my foot in the door for, you know, we've done stuff for, you know, business owners where I'm like, man, if we take on their landscape job at their house, like, they can see what we do and then it lands to the next one. So you're just constantly like, I got to take this job, got to take this job. Well, next thing you know, you're working full time Monday through Friday and running your business and you're working sick, your business six days a week too. So it's like, don't forget you still have a family at home, you know, like I, cause trust me, like I fall into that. Like I have fallen into that handful of times, numerous times, you know, just keep an eye on the prize but just ultimately knowing like you still have a family at home. You still have to, because if your family life sucks, what's the point in doing what you're doing? You right. Know, yeah. Like, it's, it's hard because uh, when you love what you do, man, there's nights I'm like, I'm like, man, I don't even want to stop. Like I'm just, I'm ready to keep going. And there's yeah. days that I'm not like that, you know, but there's, there's times I'm like, Hey, uh, Jill, can, can I ask a favor? Like I know it's eight o'clock. And or seven thirty, you know, it got dark early, and and uh, can I can I come over and mow now? Can you just turn some lights on for me? I'll shine my lights in the yard. I, I mean, I'm just not ready to stop. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, yeah, I find myself doing that too. And it's like, man, I get home, my kids. By the time I get a shower and eat, it's time for my kids to go to bed. And it's like, man, I didn't even see them. Yep. You know, um, so yeah, yeah it, it can get real rough. Yeah, because especially like when it comes like because we do our cuts at the beginning of the week and then save the tail end of the week and the weekend for our landscape jobs. So, you know, 
like I said before, I'm 95% solo, like, like you. If I need someone to help out to knock some work out or we have a big job to where it's like, hey, like having that extra guy or two run and mulch would turn this into like a one day job versus a day and a half to two. Right. And it's like, so much easier and it goes way quicker. Oh, uh, I'm constantly like, running mulch, you know what yeah. I mean? Like wheelbarrow's not stopping. So, but on the end of that though, I have done Saturday into Sunday jobs as well. And I even catch myself out there. Like I've done Monday through Friday working and everything. And I have a landscape job on the weekend. My wife's at the pool with the kids and I'm like, what the hell am I doing out here? You know what I mean? Right. Like, I've caught myself, my wife had to bring me back in saying, hey, you just need to take a couple of weeks, just do your mowing accounts and chill out. So, so definitely just like knowing your limits. Like there's more work out there than what any person would know. Like any person could handle, mm-hmm. you know, and that's something I get to ask is because this spring we're going to be making a big transition. And, um, you know, a lot of folks are like, oh, well, aren't you worried about every other, all the other companies? And it's like, well, to get where we are now, all those customers, all our customers now have had the option to go with someone else, but right. they have decided to go with us. And you can't live, I, like, you can't be worried about what everyone else is doing. Like, stay in your path, stay in your lane, do what you know you need to do, and, you know, the work will the work will come in. You know what I mean? It'll come in. So just, just you know, just don't overdo yourself because you can stretch yourself thin. You know, then you get delayed, you get rain delays. And next thing you know, you have this list of jobs that are getting prolonged longer than you should have. And right. it could create a bad name for yourself too, you know? So Tiger says, uh, one of another mistakes that he's made is paying for material. And then this, the customer, or he pays for the material and then they decide they don't want it. So now, uh, now he makes them pay for that up front for the material cost. Mm-hmm. That way, uh, you know, hey, he's not out that money, which is, yeah, that's real smart. Yeah, and that could also come with, you know, like, kind of just getting to, like, after doing it for a few years now, you've kind of got an idea of, like, you can kind of feel out a customer, you know, like, how they're going to be. So if you kind of get an inkling of where it's like, say, if, if, for instance, they're kind of always on the topic of price, always on the topic of, like, how much is this, how much is that? That's a red flag of like, hey, to do this job, we're going to need a, you know, $500 deposit. Right. Half, whatever half is, because then it at least c- does cover your material. Like, that should definitely cover your material costs. Like, mm-hmm. if you, even, you know, I mean, even, whatever it is, like, if you're, if they're nagging about price, that's a red flag of just like either more likely they're just price shopping or two that could be a possibility and you need to be asking for that deposit. Cause if you ask for a deposit and they say no, then you know, it was a good thing not to even sign with them anyways, because right. they had bad intentions from the get go. Yeah. Yep. And that, yeah, that's definitely a way to save you from losing. I mean, I get asked all the time, why, why should I, you know, uh, you know, why should I pay you up front? And I mean, my answer to them is literally my reputation is there for you to see. Like yeah. if you Google my name, my company, I pop up everywhere. Yeah. Like that's a big reputation I have. Yeah. You know, uh, that take it, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But you know, yeah. uh, <clears throat> that's, that's the way I look at it. I'm like, you know, I've got plenty of, of, uh, customers that's left reviews and, and everything else talking about the quality of my work. You can go to my, you know, YouTube and look at the quality of my work. Like there's not only can you see pictures, but you can watch me do it if you wanted to. Um, and I've seen some clients. Uh, I had one client last year. They're like, uh, yeah, I've been watching your YouTube videos. And I said, "Uh Oh, yep. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, just joking. And they're like, man, you, it's, it's just, it's amazing to watch you work. And I'm like, well, thank you. You know? And, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, I have gained some clients off of literally by them watching my YouTube. Yeah. Um, we actually just picked up uh, two apartment complexes um, this year and the folks that own those apartment complexes, they graduated from my high school, like a handful of years ahead of me, but they follow me on Instagram. They follow, they watch all my videos and like, that's basically how, why they contact me was because they have seen my work online. Like I, I put it out there for everyone to see 
You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it's like, that's why if people, you know, get into onto YouTube and stuff, like also be cognizant about your audience on that end too. Like if you're just, you know, I don't, I don't watch a crap ton of long care on YouTube. You know, I have like you, Andy, like I have like my select few that I do. Cause there's a lot of negativity in the lawn care world, you know? Right. And it's like, if all your videos are just about bashing whatever, like that's not lo- making you look good in their eyes. You know what I right. mean? So just always be on a positive note. Like there's more negativity in the world. Don't add to it. So, so, uh, what do you think of this comment? Franco says another mistake he's made is not telling the customer when they are in the wrong. The customer is not always right. I agree. The customer is not always right. Um, we actually, we have had that on a few instances um, and there's nothing wrong. What is, what's the theory? Hi, higher, slow, fire fast. Is that right? Is that the, Higher oh yeah 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 so and think about that as your customers too like take for okay i'll give you a prime example we dropped i dropped one within a month and it was like every time we showed up so all right off the rip i had a bad vibe with this person like we are the third lawn care company for the year it was june so i gave them the benefit of the doubt you know gave them the whole layout of everything service their property Got a call. Hey, you know, this was whatever. Okay, no problem. We'll, we'll be sure to, you know, I'll be sure to make sure to focus on that area and whatever next time. And I mean, I service, I park in that spot. I park in one spot, hit four properties. So I hit three of their neighbors. Never do I hear a complaint from their neighbors. Never do I hear a complaint from any of them. But for some reason, this one person just always had something to say and it's got to a point where I was like, you know, I think you're looking, you know, what you're expecting from a, you know, a company. Um, We may not be your right choice. So I think it's best if, you know, we'll finish your services out for the remainder of the month. And, you know, that's going to be it Um, because, you know, I don't guarantee a plus service every single time because you're going to mess up. You're going to miss some things, but I can give you a B plus all the time. You know what I mean? So, right, yeah. But I do, I do think the customer is not always right. I always try to give them the benefit of the doubt, but there does come a point though to where I think you do have to kind of stand your ground. Like you, you just can't let a customer walk all over you. Right. Yeah. It's how you. It's how you do it. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's all in how you do it. Yes, you can be wrong, but let me word this to where. It, you're wrong, but you feel like you're not wrong. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that happens, you know, that, but that's one of those things too. Like you just learn from it. You know what I mean? You just learn like that, how, how everything pans out. You're just like, okay, well we've done it once. We know what that feels like. And you know, you don't like dropping customers. You don't like that, but right. there's no sense in walking on eggshells every single time just to make a $40 cut. Yeah. Like you will, you will fill that spot. You will yep. fill that spot. I guarantee it. Yeah. And it's, it's hard because you're like, man, that $40 just makes you dread going there every week when you, yeah. you're like all hyped up and then you're like, Oh, oh I got this one. Mary's next. on the list next. Yeah. Great. Yeah, there, and there's actually a, uh, Oh, it's by Mike McCallowitz. It's um, the pumpkin plan. And I think it's pumpkin planet. And that's something he talks about though. Is like, and even Keith Kaufman talks about it before too, where it's like, you know, expand the top, dissolve the bottom. So like literally like they say like each year you should drop your lower 10%, like rank your customers, the bottom 10% you should drop to pick up more. So you're always going to be acquiring newer customers. I know it's easier said than done, but, but yeah, there's no sense in keeping someone that's, a sore thumb if yeah. if you don't have to you know if you don't have to man just you'll 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 backfill that spot you'll backfill it any questions guys any questions yeah i, I can't see any of the chat so i um, if you click the one. bottom you might be able to uh usually if you click the bottom or click your screen there's like a oh live comments okay yep. there we yep. go good deal 
but I think it ta- it puts you in the maybe it comes up on the side. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. But you can, can you see me up. still? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I can see the comments now. All right. So uh, we've got Franco that says I had a client that would get upset with me because I would always leave the gate open every week uh, until I realized the pool guy would show up for his service after me and would leave it open. So uh, he wasn't the one that was leaving it open. Uh, but yeah, uh, I've, I've had that happen. I've had that happen. And, uh, you know what I started doing? And uh, I mean, this is just something that, you know, uh, I literally had to do was I would video, I wouldn't even picture, I would video me closing the gate and, uh, getting in my truck and pulling off the property and being like, send it, send it. you know, Hey, yeah. gates closed. All your gates are fine. I I'd do a little push tug on them to show. And then, uh, you know, Hey, it's, it's not on me anymore. I didn't do it. <laughs> and I hate to be that person, but when you've got other people showing up and things like that because they have a pool guy, they have mm-hmm. a guy coming and cleaning their, you know, uh, brush and stuff up from their yard and different areas and things like this, uh, then yeah, it gets crazy because it's like, oh well, we'll blame it on the lawn guy. You know, it's like yeah. the lawn guy always gets the blame for everything. Uh, yeah, it's almost like you're an easy target, you know, because yeah. they don't think of the lawn care guy, you know, because. It's not like lawn care is a, um, it's not the job everyone strives for, you know, like in the reality of jobs. So you're just an easy target. I feel like, you know, it's easy for them to pin it on yeah. you because who knows, maybe that pool guy was a family friend and you know, they're oh, like, he would never do that. I have to, uh, <laughs> this is, this is something I do every property. Y'all can believe it or not. Uh, every property at the beginning of the year. Okay. The beginning of the year, I walk every property and video it. Everything. I walk every property and video everything around the house. If there's a ding in the siding, it's videoed. Every bit of it before I mow my first cut. Uh, And I'll keep that. I will keep that for three months if I have to. Uh, Four months down the road, you know, or something like that. It's like, okay, well, I, I probably have no work, but some clients, guys, regardless of how long they've been with you, will try to get over on you on something every year because I, I haven't been there for four or five months. So guess what? I'm treating it just like a new customer. I'm going to yeah. walk around. I'm going to video every bit of your property. And that way, when you come back and try to say something, uh, hey, you know what? I'm The first thing I'm going to do is look at my video and see if it's there. Right. If it's not there, then okay. You know what? It it may have more than likely it wasn't me, but you know, right. I, mean, I really can't dispute it at that point. But uh, you know, I mean, I, my next question is going to be: Has anybody else been there, or you know? <clears throat> but uh, and that's not a bad. Th- I mean, that's actually. I never even thought about doing something of that. You know, area just like whether it's a new customer or whatever, even if you just walk the property and then maybe fill out, like if you send an email, you know, create a document that says like, you know, things you notice on the property and, you know, cause you notice maybe there's like, okay, like downspouts and gutters, you know what I mean? How it's just like, or not gutters. God, I hope you don't tear it on a gutter on top of the house. Tear down the gutters, boy. Yeah. But no, if you, you know, downspouts, that's an easy one that, you know, lawn care guys get, if, mm-hmm. you know, they say, oh, you ran it over or whatever. But if you notice that type of stuff. And it's broke. Like, yeah. Especially yeah. if, uh, yeah, whether it's plastic or, or, uh, yeah, yep. downspouts are a big one. I mean, a big one. Yeah. So even if you just wrote that up and just said, I mean, cause Hey, let's say they have downspouts. Well, right there, you know, you say, Hey, I noticed two of your downspouts. If they're plastic are cracked halfway up or whatever, it looks like they're in bad shape. Hey, Right there's a way to get your foot in the door. Who knows? Maybe they want you to, you know, replace those. Maybe they want you to put in a, you know, extend those down spouts out. And there's a job that can line you up. So it could also lead you into some money if you uh, if you send that out to begin the season. But yeah. yeah, definitely, it definitely covers your butt though. Yeah, always. I'm a firm believer in covering yep. your butt. Yep. Uh, man, I am all about pitchers 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 yeah uh, you know i mean that's that's just literally how i'm just like okay you know what uh i mean i i've got clients that's been with me for you know since i started my business but 
I don't put nothing past anybody. I really don't. I'm not saying my clients are bad by any means. They've been there and supported my business this whole time. Uh, but you never know, you know, you never know when that one thing's going to happen and, and you're going to go, oh crap, of course I didn't take pictures or, you know. Yeah. yeah. So especially something just, just as simple as that. I mean, mm -hmm. just save it to, you know, just heck, save it to their contact. You know what I mean? So it's right there. You don't have to scroll through a thousand pictures on your phone. Just, you know, save it on, on their contact and uh, that'd be it. So deputy says uh, failure to take photos before he started a job cost him new siding install. Man, that'd be a tough one. I'm guessing maybe I'm guessing some like if a rock or something, it may look like a rock or something flung up and busted some siding. Maybe is that way you think that's what you're referring to? Uh, could be. I mean, uh, I did a I did a house a couple years ago. And uh, they had that wood siding and it was concrete. But I mean, literally the siding was they had had somebody doing the, the property before I had started doing it. Uh, and right where my caster would be, the siding was busted up in spots, kind of like a mower. It hit that. There was no pain or anything on it. But I mean, my first walk around, man, I was like, OK, here's this. And, you know, then I go back to the yard to show I haven't mowed anything. I haven't done anything. Do a walk around. I, I mean, literally, I'm looking at everything I can. If I was a homeowner that I might just be walking out one day and may have never noticed before, but all of a sudden now that I've got a lawn guy, uh, that one spot sticks out to me and it's like, oh, that, that was never there. So the lawn guy had to do it. You know, I mean, no, no, the lawn guy didn't do it. Here's, here's the, you know, video of before I ever touched your property um, yep. that's that's just how i do things i'm and it may take me a little longer but you know i mean i'd much rather cover my basis than uh than run into that one client and i, I don't yep. think i have to worry about that with any of my clients but uh you know sometimes you it can happen it can definitely happen i need help titling my video it is dethatching and my first video well, it's probably not going to matter what you title it if it's your first video. <laughs> like, just say it. Yeah. Just say it. Yeah, this the, you got to have like a ton of videos before you start getting in the algorithm anyway. Uh, and then it's going to go off views and things like that. So, no string trimmer tips done before we took on property. No string trimmer tips done before we took on property. I don't know what that means, but mm -mm. no string trimmer tips done before we took on property. Unless he's talking about uh, maybe if he has uh, a guy working for him and doesn't kind of go over the lay of the land on like oh no string trimmer rips. He meant rips. No string trimmer rips done. Uh, I, I've still I. Another thing is always good to have spare belts, blades, and tools in here. That is for sure, man. I keep an impact, a uh, spare trailer tire, and uh, I've got a, a air compressor and a plug kit uh, to, you know, patch my tires if I need to, and I've got it all, man. I try to think about it anyway. Yeah. Extra blades in case something happens. Yep. <clears throat> Absolutely. All right, guys, we've been in here an hour and 40 minutes, 15 people in here. I think we are going to uh, call it a night. Nobody else has seemed to want to join, uh, but I think we had a good good hour and a half for sure. Yeah. For sure. So uh, Saturday night, guys, I'm going to try to, you know, think of some pizzazz, I guess, for <laughs> Saturday night Lanier. Yeah, that's Saturday night live. Uh, yeah, I know original, but whatever. Make, uh, hey, make it Saturday night Lanier. There you go. Saturday night Lanier. Yeah. yeah. Saturday night Lanier. And we're gonna have uh uh John uh what's his name? Uh Elton John in the background singing uh that Saturday night uh song. <clears throat> so yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. You know, I, I won't be able to do anything with the video. No, uh they'll they'll copyright the crap out of it. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you what, that copyright deal, I it, dude, I'm telling you, this video was probably two years ago, 
and it's like and once you get monetized you start just getting these notifications like everywhere and like i pay for my music so like there's do you ever get the uh um third party what is that one called hawk is it hawk or something I don't know. I've had one where uh, I, I got video or I got music when I was starting out. I was getting it off of uh, no copyright sales and uh, putting it on my videos. And then all of a sudden, after a year of being on my channel, they hit me for, you know, half the profits. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I'll delete the video. I'll I'll delete the like, video. whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I had... But I had a, I mean, there was like in the background, there was, it was actually a Luke Combs song, but it was just, you know, I had the radio playing. It was just in the back. I mean, yep. I was like, how did someone even pick that out? And I'm thinking like a small channel like mine, you know what I mean? Like in this realm of YouTube. Well, I don't think it's, it's people. It's uh, literally um, off of like, if there's a certain five or 10 seconds of the music, it automatically picks it up as you know, and, and then it, it's just like, uh, you know, that, that thing where if you, somebody's playing a song and you're like, what song is that? And you can go to the app and just let it listen. And then yeah. it'll tell you the name of the song. Well, it's kind of like that is how it works. Uh, yeah. so it has nothing to do with how big you're, I mean, you could right. be the channel in the world. If you're playing, you know, copyrighted music in the background, yeah. you may not be monetized. They'll just delete the video for you. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, but yeah, it hit and I was like, what the hell? And I just opted to, I could just music out. Well, I could just silence like that, right. like 10 second, 15, whatever it was that it was, yeah. cause it was just a small clip anyways, but it just silenced that 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And I was still able to keep everything. But B, yeah, I was like, Man, that's been out there forever. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, like all of a sudden they decided to freaking use this. So, yeah. So now I use, uh, well, I'm looking for something new, man. Like I use art list and I'm really not that impressed with it. Like, man. Okay. So that's a question I have. I, that's who I use art list. Um, so say for instance, I cancel my subscription. Do I lose all rights to all of the, Oh, fuck. Oh my gosh. That's well, like no, 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 no. I don't think you do. Um, if you read, uh, I think I read this on there. Um, it, any music you paid for while you were paying for it. Uh, so any music while you were in this, they let you keep. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Now, um, God, I wish. Mm. But you know what I mean, though? Because it's like, well. Yeah, I know I've seen it. Videos. I know for a fact I seen it on uh on my thing to where it it mm, I know I seen so it. Would it just be like then from that point forward you can no longer obviously use right yeah any of that music, but because that's why I wondered too, because I thought about going with epidemic sounds. So I feel like you can get like let me make sure about, what I use. Um, what I hate about Artlist is they don't have like sound effects, you know what I mean? So like if you want like a train like a transition sound. Or anything like that. They don't have anything like that. It's all just. Oh, you're good. Um, they don't have any like tr like sound effects or anything like that. It's all right. just. Mine is. Music. I'm, I'm making sure that that's where I get mine from before I lie to you because I'm good at that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is though. But come on. Uh, let's see here. I don't know where I got it from. Uh, properties. Let's go there and see. I have no clue. Details. Yeah, because that would that would suck if <laughs> you know all those videos you use that music for, you can no longer monetize or whatever. Just right. because you know, I would hope it would. I would hope it would be to where like if you were paying for that, you know, I would hope they wouldn't. Oh, um, like that. But then again, I guess if that's that's the way it works, then I'm, I guess I'm just going to continue paying for an artless subscription and never use it. Yeah. See, I got TubeBuddy. And so whatever yep. mine is through. Oh, it's Epidemic Sounds. Is yeah. What mine's through. That's what I thought about. Do you not like it? I don't. No. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. The music is just so. 
so boring and, and like I sat there and listened to 80 freaking different things before I'm like, oh, that's a good one. And then it's like all the other ones are so not upbeat and they're just, oh my God, I'm just like. The part of music like I was getting tired of doing was like, it just seemed like everyone had like that techno. Which yeah. that was, but you know, like two years ago, that was what the music was. Like yeah. that was. Everybody you know, was doing no copyright sounds and. Yeah, that, but that's what it was. But now I'm looking for more like bass beats and you know some different stuff like that for some. Yeah, I want some upbeat stuff. Like, I yeah. hate that. I hate that. So like, I'm like, oh my god, I just want to fall asleep listening to this. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no way I'm going to watch a video. Yeah, then I'm not trying to get like a dance party going where it's just right. Like, boom, 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 boom. Like, man, like it's so hard to find music. It's, it's so yeah. hard. Uh, I'm so just like, like I would like art list. I would if if they brought in a sound effects world to their stuff, I would definitely still like them. I I don't know. I like their music, but like I said, just not having some of those cool sound effects like the transition sounds and all that, but apparently Zach's uh Trying to be like his biggest YouTuber fan. Uploaded a Brian song. Oh, you know what I bet it is though. You know I bet he's seeing. I don't know if. Okay, I don't. I don't know if the Zach, if Zach has videos up or anything. But if someone saves a video, doesn't it pop up on their YouTube channel? You know yeah. what I mean. So, yeah, so it could not be that he uploaded it. It'd just be like he saved it to his thing, and then because he doesn't have videos uploaded, it just pops up on his channel as, like, saved videos or something. That's funny. I would be shocked as Dan turns out to be Asian. Dan's Lawn and Snow, man. This guy comes in. Uh, I got to tell you the story of this guy. It's it's pretty funny. <clears throat> two, two to three weeks ago, uh, after I'd been doing lives for, you know, probably a couple of days, maybe a half a week. I don't know. Um, we were talking about the biggest super chat I ever had. And I was like, man, I'll never forget it. Uh, Mario Sons came in my room one night, dropped 50 bucks, man. And I was just like, I'll never forget uh, the night he did that. And uh, so this Dan's Lawn and Snow comes out of nowhere. Never seen him before, ever. Uh, comes out of nowhere and drops a hundred bucks. And I was just like, I, you know, I'm sitting there talking yeah. and I'm like, you know, and I look and I'm like, oh my God, Dan, like, I don't know what to say. Like, really, I'm speechless. And I was like thinking it to, in my head, I was like, okay, well, I need to stay online and, you know, just keep talking until this hundred dollar super chat goes away. Uh, needless to say, it was about three hours later or whatever. And, uh, and I was like, man, you know, I mean, I, I just felt like I couldn't get off. I felt obligated at that point to stay and talk. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so, uh, so yeah, so Dan has, uh, he, he's come in and he's usually in the room all the time. So I made him a moderator because he never says anything hardly unless you talk about him. Uh, but he just stays in the background and, you know, uh, you'll see him at the beginning. He'll say hello. And at the end, usually he'll say good night, you know, and that's pretty much it. Uh, but you mentioned you're like, is Dan still in here? And, uh, he'll pop up and just go LOL or something, you know, crazy. So, okay, Zach, thanks. Us old guys are full of questions on these tech devices. (coughs) Does, uh, which if you, does, so if you go live, does that count to your watch time? Yes. I thought about that. Yep, it's, it does. Like, um, it it just actually like with, just like folks right now, like just even you know, a lot of folks are more on YouTube now than because of all this stuff going on. So I was like, man, if a lot of folks are on YouTube, then it'd be it just just like conversations like this. This is just fun to do. Like watch time, whatever. The but problem just, with it is they want to start out doing grow streams, and they've got fifteen hundred subscribers. Now they're doing shout outs every day to try to get, you know, to try to get, even though they're a lawn care, they're doing shout outs with all these other people that's not got nothing to do with lawn care. Uh, And the issue with it is uh, what they don't understand, I guess, is 
these people are there for your shout out stuff. Uh, but they're, they don't care about your lawn care stuff. You know, when you start posting your lawn care videos and stuff, you, you can tell you're getting 20, 30, 40 views. When you're doing a shout out, you're getting 200, 300. So, you know, I mean, uh, why would you start out? I mean, yeah, you can have all the subscribers in the world, but if they're not watching, you're never going to hit that time. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's, it's hard. Luckily I got in it before any of that happened. Um, like luckily, like, I mean, it was, they made it a lot harder for people. Uh, and I'm, I, I guess it's a good thing. I don't know if you got in before they started all that. What, what, what exactly are you talking about? Well, uh, the thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Okay. So yes, I did not. So to be able to like monetize and stuff. Right. Yeah. So I did not. And that. It was just 1,000 subs, right? Yeah. And then they switch it to the 4,000 hours. It, and it's not just 4,000 hours of watch time. You have to have, like, for tw like at any 12-month period, right. you have to have your 4,000 hours. Yeah. So, like, you know, I hit my 1,000 right at the end of lawn care season. And, dude, it, like, but I was still, like, you know, it's handful, 100, whatever hours short. And I was like, mother trucker, because I'm at the end of long care. Because I'm, I'm sure you see now in your analytics. Oh, yeah. Views, They'll start going back up. Just yep. go way back up. You know what I mean? Like yep. your views. Your Every year it happens up. like that. Yep. Yep. So I, I was, I hit my thousand on the decline. And I was like, son of a gun. So, but yeah, but now we're, I mean, now we, we're getting out. But, uh, but yeah, that was tough though. That sucked. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, I got my thousand, like. Yes, and then you know, then that hit, and but yeah, it's it's tough though. It, yeah, YouTube is such like it is such a hard deal. I mean, well, I, it, it was kind of a you know, it was one of those things. It was like, okay, well, everybody's trying to do it, so maybe with them doing this, it will show them how much <laughs> real effort they're going to have to put into this to get where they want to be. And it'll deter them from doing it. Uh, and so I was kind of glad they did it uh, because it made people actually put in work to you have get. To, but it's the truth, though. You have to because, like, I mean, I think everyone when they get into it thinks it's going to be easier than what it is. And right. then, which I'm still, hey, I'm still a small fish in a big pond. Oh, so am I. Mean? So am yeah, I. So I mean, like, we just hit. We're at like 1,200 now, but I just think like, okay, it's because of how many people are now on YouTube, it took me a hundred videos or almost a hundred videos to get to a thousand, a hundred videos. I just got a thing the other day saying that, uh, what was it? Um, what was it? Uh, it was something about, uh, actually it's right here. Let's go. Uh, I'd reached a monument. Um, it was, it was kind of funny though, because one of them was, uh, I finally uploaded 300 videos and the other one was, what was it? Uh, I forget what it was. It was views or something, but I finally uploaded like 300 videos and I was like, man, like I've almost been doing this uh, the end of May, which I'm still, you know, a couple months away, but the end of May will make four years I've been doing this. And so it took me four years to get, you know, almost four years to get over 9,000 subscribers and 300 yeah. videos later. And, uh, but I didn't put a lot of effort into it last year. And uh, so I said, you know what, yeah. I'm going to put the more effort into it this year. And I mean, it shows all of my analytics are, are up, you know, I mean, I, yeah. I'm up. Uh, and so it's like, man, this feels good. You know, like this makes me want to push more content out. Um, but I'm never going to be the guy that pushes content out daily. Uh, just because I've got a family, man, you know, I want to, I want to keep my family time. Uh, but I want to, you know, I, I love doing my lives and I love mingling, uh, yeah. I guess you could call it with my, with the people that watch me. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. I get it. Cause it definitely is a, it's a, I mean, if you're doing it for money, there's, it's not like go pick up more properties. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I showed did. people on that. I said, this is, yeah. this is what I've made guys in four years. I don't care to show you. If you think I'm in it for the money, 
I was never in it from the money for the money to begin with. Like literally I can legitimately sit here and tell you that it, it was never about the money. It was to show people uh, that I could start a business and quit a full time, good paying job and succeed. Like that's yeah. what I was all about. Or I was going to fail and it was all going to be on video. One yeah. of the two, you yeah. know, uh, and it just yeah. blew up into this. And uh, yeah. I got to where I said, you know what? Um, I mean, you know, I, we get we get sponsorships, you know, hey, reaching out to us all the time. Uh, the thing is, is if I feel like I wouldn't personally use it or it's not used on my personal stuff on a day to day thing, I'm, I don't want to be that guy. You know, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. Like I, I want to see the good in it. Uh, but at the same time, I want to see the reality of it as well. Like this well, is just. Plus, it's like I think that's a good point, too, because you see like everyone knows who those channels are that they don't care what it is. It may have nothing to do with anything and they're everything's good it on and probably no negative. On. Yeah. Nothing. And it's like, come on now, but well, I guess if should we answer some of these, que there's some questions on here. I was just looking at, there are some topics, I guess, or are you ready to be done? So is that why everyone is doing these live shows so that they get their watch time? I'm not sure. Uh, I This is not why I do these. Trust right. me. I do not need to do these in order to get my watch time. I guarantee you uh, I'm going to hit my watch time whether I'm doing a live yeah. or not. Like, it makes no difference to me. No. Uh, and if you and notice. Thing, this, I mean, is it's, only an, this is two hours right now. Right. That's not. I mean, that. Yeah, it don't. It really don't add up. That's, but there uh, are folks that may do it just because they could be struggling with watch time. Right that's now, if you that's not a possibility. People may yeah. be doing that. Yeah, but that's but not no. why I do. That's not, well, no. uh, longscapes. That could be a reason why other people do it. But um, yeah, I mean, you got to look at my channel and look at the views I'm starting to get. I'm I'm going to hit my four thousand hours regardless whether I do a live or not. But uh, it's great to do these lives. Like I really, I used to do them all the time. If you're new to the channel. Then, you know, for, for the people that's been here with me since I started, I used to do lives all the time. And, uh, yeah. you know, life got in the way. And I was like, man, I really want to start doing that again. And so here, here we are, you know. <clears throat> uh, Stacy from Lawn Commander says he don't do it for the money. Um, despise the sub for sub grow streams yeah man it's like okay sub for sub and i'm like it, it don't matter you can have you can have fifteen thousand subs if your videos are getting 300 views people are going well that's weird you know and it's not even channels that are commenting on your videos that make uh make anything you know <clears throat> it's the sub for sub i mean uh, my thoughts are is like if someone asks me, hey, will you sub to my channel? Sure, I'll sub your channel. I don't care. You know what I mean? Because if, if that's what you want, to if it's just a subscriber, then yeah, I'll go to your channel and subscribe. Right. Because, I mean, in reality, it's like, say you follow a 1,000 people on Instagram. You're not scrolling through a 1,000 people on your Instagram feed. You know, right. It's who you follow. It's who you, you know, talk yep. with and everything. So if someone's a sub, I'll sub. But that's not gaining, I mean – just because someone subscribes or, you know, for like that sub for sub thing, it doesn't mean it's helping you by any means at all. Yeah. Uh, my biggest thing was, uh, you know, I go, I go to some of these, uh, like I, I'll just say, uh, I go to Shane, DOT's channel. He does his grow stream thing. A lot of people in there are lawn care companies. Uh, a lot of these people already follow me. I joined to, you know, show my support. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'll call them in or whatever. And, uh, you know, I'll go to some of these lawn care pages and, and subscribe to them to see what they got because they're newer, they're upcoming. Um, but, you know, I, I'll do some lives and I'll get some people that were in that grocery stream, have nothing to do with lawn care that went and subscribed to me. And so they come in, you know, thinking that, oh, this guy's got 20 something people, 30 something people in his live. You know, I'm going to go join and grow, grow, grow. And uh, so I, I had to... Uh, there was a, literally only two people that pretty much did it. Um, and I, I finally got to the point to where I was like, don't take this the wrong way. But guys, I do not come in here and support Shane uh, for grow stream. Like I don't do grow streams. This is not what I do. 
Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. It just is. It is what it is. Um, Danny don't do grow streams. Like, like I come here to support Shane and, you know, watch him. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's, you know, that's, that's what it's there for. <clears throat> and, uh, he comes in here, supports me, watches me, you know, and, and, but some of the people that's, that's in some of them grow streams have come to my channel and like, Hey man, I got you. Uh, I hearted you. I hearted you. And I'm like, we, we don't do that in here. Like, you know, like <laughs> Power lives can hurt your numbers sometimes, right? Uh, it really depends. It can hurt you if, uh, here's how it can hurt you, okay? Um, and you're probably not going to get a lot of people watch a two-hour live video. Uh, that's what makes it hard. Um, but here's, here's what will hurt you is I posted a video. OK, uh, sat Friday, Saturday, posted a video, uh, got over, what, 1500 views already. Um, this video could be up for two weeks and it probably wouldn't hit 500. Yes, that just hurt me. That just hurt my views. Um, so now my analytics just went down a little bit to where if I posted two videos, it's going to hit 1500 compared to my, my two videos that just hit 2000. Well, you know, now I got an average of a thousand compared to I could have an average of fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, it, it can hurt you. It can hurt you, and that's why a lot of my streams uh, I I delete usually. I mean, a lot of them I delete because right. they're just literally just talking for no reason, and it's like nobody's going to now. This I may leave this up. Uh, I think this was a good thing, even if it gets three hundred views. Uh, at least you know. People got some in for some great information out of it. So, do I list it as entertainment? Well, I don't know, Zach. Are you trying to be an entertainer, man? I mean, each video too. Um, I mean, I guess it depends on like every video is different. I mean, how to style people blog. It just all depends on your subject and right. What, well, you, you don't want to be in kids. Well, but I don't even know. Uh, if, honestly, I don't even know if. Do you even really think that matter? I mean, I don't know what mine's I, on there. I don't know if that really has much to do with because, yeah, I don't know if that even really has much to do with how your videos going. I mean, your videos. I feel like your video is either going to rank or it's not. Right. Like it's yeah, it goes off of or it's not. So what happens uh, is when you post a video, what you're supposed to do, okay? What you're supposed to do. Uh, I don't know everything. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to hype people up for a video, okay? You're supposed to get them hyped up to watch your videos. Uh, and then, guys, man, Saturday, I can't wait. This We got this great thing going on. Hype them up. Yep. Saturday comes, boom, hit them with that video. Then you're still talking about that video even after it was posted, mm -hmm. your, your next couple videos to keep people hyped up. Um, but what happens is – uh, if you get into the, the algorithm thing of YouTube, what happens is I post a video. If I hit so many views within a certain amount of time, then it will fall from that first. It'll go into what is considered another tier and it'll branch out and it'll send uh, to more subscribers to my channel um, and they'll get the notification. And then if it hits so many views within a certain amount of time within them subscribers, then it'll it'll go to another tier and it just keeps expanding uh, depending on how many videos or how many viewers you're getting off of them. Uh, so, you know, if I post a video and I get 30, 30 uh, things and then 30 views in an hour, then more than likely it's not going to hit that second tier to branch out. So people's going to go, oh man, I missed that video. Well, that's why you missed the video. Yeah. So if you ever hear people say, oh, it didn't come up or I missed that video, that's usually the reason why is because the video didn't do that great to start off. Um, so you want people to be hyped up for your videos. And that way they watch because the more watch uh, views you're going to get, the more people it's going to branch out to. Uh, and then it's going to get you in that algorithm and things like that. And that's why I feel <clears throat> like right now, I mean, like we're we're editing that video right now, but like trailer setup video right now. If you want to talk about a video that will just get spread and spread and spread, everyone's looking at trailer setups right now. I mean, it's it's 
That is we, the video to have at the beginning of spring. Is we were talking video. about it earlier, and uh, I was telling somebody. I said, I said my last setup video got ten thousand views. Uh, and what? And, uh, uh, and, and since and last you, year, what? My two thousand nineteen setup video only has like ten thousand something views on it. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, my two thousand twenty video. Already has over 10,000 views. See, okay, that's what I thought you was talking about because I was like, dude, yeah. I feel like you just posted in like a week. And, yeah, and, yeah, it's, it's been on there about a, a little over a week and it literally it's got over 10,000 and it just keeps growing every day. And as it grows, you can watch my subscriber count going up too. Trending too, yeah. Yep. yeah but I mean, you know, that's, but that's just with fault. I mean, and that's not to, like a cash grab to grab followers. It's just, right. it's no different than, Okay, take for instance when this Corona deal popped up, and you was one of the first ones of the Corona deal. You're going to be one of the first videos up right. of that topic, and it's yeah. going to go. And everybody's like, "Oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. People yeah, like so. drama, man. People yeah. like, drama. and it's just you know, it's just. I mean, that's why I always try to think like recording videos like maybe a cup like a month ahead of when right. like that time frame is, just to kind of help like stay ahead of the curve but i mean i mean like i said i'm still learning all this like i can't really say much but i just try and try and figure any little bit out i can but you know um power says uh we're not going to say no names but power says you know the uh, he used to watch these people um and he's you know uh they used to be great people because they used to be real and unsponsored um mm -hmm. and you know the sponsorships are ruining it for him to watch them anymore uh, I, I, I want to say one thing about this and, uh, you know, a lot of people, it will go to their head. Um, once you start getting into this, you will find out who the real people are and who, what their real intentions are. Uh, I could have so many things right now that I could be telling y'all about light bars and fancy freaking vacuums. that's going to run over my floor. Uh, but you know what, Danny don't have none of that stuff. Um, Sponsors are great, but I believe if you're going to have a sponsor, uh, you should be doing it for the right reasons because you actually believe in that product. Uh, and that's the only reason. And I tell everybody, if there's ever a time you see me going the wrong direction, please feel free to reach out to me and give me a level head again, because I don't want to be that person. I don't. Yeah. I do not want to be that person. That is not what I want my channel to be about. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody that's watching right now to hold me responsible for my words. If you ever see me go in that direction, please let me know. And, you know, and also on that sponsor thing too is, you know, also like, because I get that wholeheartedly. I get where there's folks that you can tell where it's like, they're just grabbing at anything, you know, but there's also the folks too that, don't hate them though for ha for taking on opportunities that are given to them because of the time that they put into something to get, you know I mean? To get that right. opportunity, you know, cause it is a give and take, you know what I mean? But I do agree that it can get like, overwhelming though, like can. literally overwhelming, but it's like, you know, just don't hate someone though for taking an opportunity that, any person in their right mind would, you know, take an opportunity like that. Can you read that? Oh, you can't read that. Lawnscape said, wait, how much is the vacuum? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are crazy. All right, guys. Uh, I am going to get off here. It is what? What time is it? It's 1040. Man, we've been on here two hours, 10 minutes almost. So uh, Dylan's been hanging out with us for like yeah. the past hour. <laughs> yeah. It's been great. It, time just goes by whenever you start doing this. Because I remember back in the, I mean, I hate to keep dragging on, but I remember back in the day, it was going into GIE, I think. And it was me, you, and Andy on a live. And dude, it was like, I, I'm pretty sure it was four in the morning before we got off. Probably. Just, and there may have been like four people in still with us, but we was talk. I mean, we talked about everything like mm -hmm. we eventually got to where we weren't even talking about lawn care yeah, right what do you what do y'all want to talk about now like oh man yeah. what do we do uh, i remember his his wife was bringing me down dr peppers um and she cooked us pizza and yeah it was, it was a great <laughs> night it was a great night so yeah it's 
It's fun. It's all in good fun, though. Yeah, Ron like Commander this. said, we go to work to make money. So, yeah, you sell out. <laughs> but, yeah, but, you know, like I said, YouTube, it's all for fun. It's all good. Don't think too much into it. It's YouTube. That's like all yeah. that drama crap, I guess, was started before. And it's just like with between some like YouTube yeah. or whatever. It's just like, man. It's just YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're just posting yeah. videos. Like, man, like, like it's, yeah. And the, the good thing about it is, uh, I'm going to leave on this note, is yep. uh, we can we can all disagree. This is the best thing ever, man. Uh, Wally Woods, for instance. Uh, we can totally disagree um, on, I mean, you'll see us fighting on freaking Facebook pages about some stuff. Uh, Plemons. Uh, yeah, I mean, everybody has their own opinion, you know, but when you go to GIE, it really shows how close of a community we are because all that set aside, I mean, we all know we've got our own opinions, but it don't hurt. Uh, it don't hurt us to hang out and, you know, talk and, and, you know, I mean, uh, things like that. And that's where it really comes into to play at, I guess you yeah. say is, <clears throat> Uh, Lonscape says, what if I get a bunch of strippers and make a channel? Well, you're probably going to blow up, man. Your, your channel is going to blow up. So, uh, I'm glad I'm a subscriber. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> uh, right. Right. I'm sure everybody that watches this, I think yeah. knows this was a joke. Like that state farm uh, commercial. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. Night powers. You don't have to do it. Uh, deputy said, thanks, Dylan. Was great to get to know you better. Yeah, man, absolutely. It was fun to get on here. I'm glad I did. I got video to edit. I'm on vacation this week for my full time job. So I'm happy, man. I'm so happy. I am uh, just doing a bunch of. We had uh, we had somebody come in and give us a thumbs down. Yeah, out of uh, we got eleven thumbs up, one thumbs down. You know There's what? Though? I bet that person, person. I bet the thumbs down came up from the basement because their yeah. Wi-Fi was so bad in their basement. They had to go upstairs yeah, their mom's probably, in the, yeah. from their mom's basement, and you know, probably, probably, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it's just it's just Lanier. Hang on, we'll hit the thumbs down. But I'm so sick of seeing his videos. Um, you know, if you're going to thumbs down me, I, I wish you would just honestly unsubscribe from me. I mean. But then again, I don't know. I mean, I guess you're still watching, so it counts as a view. I guess you could stay. That's fine. But yeah. <laughs> whatever. All right, man. Y'all have a good one. I am out yeah. of here. Dylan, thanks for joining. Good luck editing your video. What's video coming out? Um, we're hoping this one actually be live tomorrow afternoon, probably around six uh, Eastern Standard. So um, this would be a good one. It's uh, I don't want to dive into the Corona deal, but. I just gave like a little bit of my input and then what we have going on the back end. Cause like I said, I'm working full time running the business and we're hoping to tackle this thing this year. So uh, just kind of just showing what we have going on the behind the scenes to keep the ball rolling. So it'll be there a good go. one. So, and we have some big videos coming up that will be fun to watch. So, so uh, keep an eye out for those. Cause there you go. Dylan's getting y'all hyped up. Hyped Dylan's up. getting y'all hyped up. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all have a good one, man. I am out. I'm go I'm so excited to go to work tomorrow. I don't. I, I'm not going to be able to sleep. But <clears throat> all right, guys, uh, thanks for watching, man. Forgot to thumbs up you. I appreciate that. First step: lawn care and property maintenance. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Look at that, guys. New person. I, I don't think I've seen that before. Uh, so. Anyway, I am going to get off here. Y'all have a good night, Stacy. Have a good one, Franco. Zach, uh, Dan, Josh, man, man, too many people in here to, to thank everybody. Uh, Deputy, you know, Neil. Um, all right, guys, I'm out, or I'll sit here and talk forever. So y'all have a good one.